I was in a bit of a quandary about reviewing Gilbert Escape from Drill. You see, the way I format this show with a preamble and history about the television show or character on which the game is based, before going into the gameplay, well, it's going to end up being very similar to Slope's Game Room video about Gilbert Escape from Drill that he put out three years ago. Luckily, the sound, editing and general quality of my video will be much lower and hopefully this will differentiate enough between the two where he doesn't accuse me of plagiarising him. Ah, my low self-esteem is not always a barrier to glorious mediocre victory. So, self-degradation and piteous nature reveal done, let's go. Get Fresh was a mid-80s Saturday morning show. These were a popular thing at the time, when children would celebrate the two days of weekly freedom with a bowl of cereal and perhaps utilising a family dog as a cushion as they sat right in front of the television and this gala of awkward interviews, noisy, way too hyped up production staff, cheery, calm, professional presenters and musical performances from musicians up six hours before they normally awaken performing songs that are by now distant nostalgic memories of a time when everything was possible the summer sky was limitless and impossibly blue and life wasn't a constant loop of dull sleeping eating working eating sleeping working sigh that is the longest sentence i've ever committed to. Some of us were just watching programmes like Get Fresh, Live and Kicking, Going Live, Number 73 or Ghost Train to get to the juicy, delicious cartoon shows. Get Fresh, for instance, premiered Centurions. I made a video about that game. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's a terrible game. And you can watch that video, probably at a link, if I've remembered to put it in. So, Get Fresh then, presented by Gaz Top, who is or was married to Violet Berlin from Bad Influence. Get Fresh was also the pioneer of embarrassing yourself by trying to play a video game on national telly using a telephone with roughly four Google Stadia's worth of lag as you desperately tried to win a skateboard or an NES or, I don't know, a slime pit by flailing about on Xenon on the Amiga. So there already are a couple of game links from Get Fresh. Uh, tenuous ones, I'll give you. In the first series, Get Fresh was co-presented by Adrian Mole actor Gian Samarco. And then someone decided that he was so bad that even a hideous stream of consciousness spewing snot factory lump of latex would be better. That lump would end up being named Gilbert the Alien. Poor Adrian Mole. Gilbert was a shambolic out-of-worlder and stowaway on the show set, the potentially libelously named Millennium Dustbin. This fellow was no doubt designed to appeal to the likes of boys aged between 6 and 12, whose comedy uh, once ranged from scatological to even more scatological. Farts, gore, poo, vomit, wee, snot... Anything vaguely moist that is usually kept inside the body triggers something primal in kids of a certain age. They just find it hilarious. And they don't even know about spunk yet. You just wait until children find out about that. Apropos of children finding out about spunk, nothing to do with it at all. Here's a scene of Gilbert meeting Roland Rat and um, Jimmy Savile. <coughs> <coughs> Anyway, this lowbrow attempt at getting young eyes on Gilbert totally worked. He was immensely popular. Just as popular as Gordon the Gopher or Ed the Duck, but way, way grosser. Look at Gilbert. Just look at him. He's designed by nightmares. He's so gross. Get him out of my sight. But he was a runaway success who would go on to have two spin-off shows from Get Fresh, those being the Tiny Tees Productions Gilbert's Fridge in 1988 and Gilbert's Late in 1990. I've never seen Gilbert's Late. Hopefully he didn't die in it. Apart from his grossness, a lot of Gilbert's appeal came from a really good performance from comedian and impressionist Phil Cornwell, a spitting image regular. 
Cornwell basically plays Gilbert as an East End wide boy and uh, he quipped and ad-libbed his way through conversations with a variety of celebs and hosts. He's effortless at times, incredible, and a key contributor to Gilbert's 80s success. Then, when the 90s hit, people moved on, snotty-nosed aliens were out, and sheep that looked like they were in the boy band Bross were in. Well, either Bross or that late-night gay exchange advert from the mid-90s. I say that, but no one made a Spectrum game about Nobby the Sheep, so he was never in. No one remembers Nobby the Sheep, or cares about you, Nobby the Sheep. Nobby the Sheep, go away, you're rubbish, mate. Gilbert Escape from Drill was the one and only computer game based on the short-lived nasal mucus oozing phenomenon, and it was also released on the MSX, the Amstrad CPC and the Commodore 64. The game was released by short-lived software house again again and developed by Enigma Variations, who are no strangers to TV show adaptions on the 8-bit computers, putting out games we've already looked at on this channel like Super Ted and Count Duckula, and ones we've yet to get to like Thomas the Tank Engine, Defenders of the Earth, Sooty, Postman Pat and the Wombles. They also did the recently covered official Father Christmas game, which I feel I can't dwell on because talking about Christmas just after it's happened feels really, really weird. The plotline to Gilbert's game is this. On his return to his home planet Drill, Gilbert's civilization have quickly grown weary of the motormouth bogey sprayer and his prodigal son boasting of a TV career on a faraway planet. So the spiteful and envious denizens of Drill have bitterly broken up the Millennium Dustbin into five bits and scattered it across the planet like a bunch of assholes. Why can't this guy have success? Why do you have to be this way, people of Drill? Gilbert must traverse through the fast food restaurants, city streets, sewers, milk bars, oceans and jungles of his home planet to collect and reassemble his trusty spaceship and get it across the infinite blackness of space within 24 hours to renew his contract with Tyne T's television. Maybe the canon outcome of this is that he failed to do it given the fact that the ugly git hasn't appeared on television since. Forever trapped on his home planet, kicking himself with his single foot that his fellow jealous planet dwellers thwarted his stardom. It's either that or Snot only has a very limited shelf life from a humour point of view. Also a very limited shelf life from an edible point of view. Please don't eat Snot, it's disgusting. The game is presented in a style similar to that of one of my all-time favourite Spectrum games, that being Jack the Nipper, with its sprawling four-directional map and the, a very similar perspective to that game. It's definitely a game that benefits from a map what with uh, the 24 hour time limit that acts also as an energy bar. You'll find that your time is ebbed away super quick by collisions with the respawning mugwump oafs that fling themselves at our oozing anti-hero. These can be defeated by gobbing at them. Gobbing at people is a wonderful lesson for 80s children. It's how I've diffused every argument I've ever had since I acquired this game in 1989. It works every single time to get you into hospital with a broken face. You can't just uh, troop around and find the pieces though, even if you know exactly where they are from previous playthroughs. No sir, you have to find the arcade machines in the many milk bars around Drill's cityscape. Each of the five simple mini-games will give you a clue to the whereabouts of the ship piece. They're not particularly good mini-games, but they're a nice little distraction. They didn't have to put them in, and um, they're perfectly serviceable. Once you've unlocked the clues, you can toddle off slowly on your single slug hoof. Um, drill is varied, unlike the single topological features of a Star Wars movie. One up to Gilbert there for understanding that planets are usually quite different. Make sure you take out 
a few enemies along the way as they will drop a can of beans which you will need of course because it will give you the ability to propel yourself upwards to some of the more difficult to access ship pieces yes of course by the power of body burp guffery grunts you can loft yourself into the sky did i say gilbert was a one trick pony why i take it back it's not just not after all it's his body burps as well so how does gilbert measure up it's okay he's painfully slow to move about be it on the land in the air or swimming around the enemies are absolutely relentless in their attack patterns and gilbert has to stop before he can rattle up a greenie out of his throat which slows you down even more i can't really criticize it too much though as he doesn't move much slower than my beloved jack the nipper other than that it's a game which is a fair challenge and you know what it's okay it's pretty all right nothing to write home about but then if you're writing letters home to your parents about old spectrum games following the misadventures of a disgusting latex puppet with a permacold you need to stop doing that because i think your parents may start to worry a bit about you or at least be very disappointed presentation wise the 128k music is jaunty enough and the gilbert sprite is a fine representation of the drooling buffoon whoever passed the color clash though in the eye searing horror that is the milk bar is a sadist and a bell end. Crash Magazine declared it as a fun little game and gave Gilbert Escape from Drill a solid 76 out of 100 in their August 89 edition. Your Sinclair was almost, almost in complete agreement for once and slapped a 78 out of 100 down and called it a suitably snot filled epic in their October 89 issue and I completely agree with that so peace in our time just as we we're about to go into World War 3 maybe a snot filled alien can save us I don't know can't be worse than many other world leaders can he anyway K thanks bye